Hi, this is Galit Gofarb and thank you very much for joining me here today. Today I'm going to be talking about the benefits or slash detriments of sugar replacements. Many people today have a difficult relationship with sugar and sugar is known to cause many health problems and for this reason it is usually substituted with different artificial sweeteners or more natural sweeteners such as stevia, yacon syrup, uh, monk fruit, erythritol and the like. But the question arises, are these replacements healthy or are they not? And are they better for our health than consuming sugar? Well, as we know, not all sugar replacements are the same and not all of the sweeteners have similar health effects on our bodies. Some are better than the others. The FDA, the F uh, Food and Drug Administration, has approved only a few artificial sweeteners, including saccharine, aspartame, and acylfame, as well as sucralose and neotame and one natural sweetener, stevia. But this does not make them necessarily healthy sugar replacements because manufacturers must process the natural stevia leaves and add many chemicals to it, which means it can no longer be considered a natural product. So for these reasons, you need to be careful when choosing uh, sugar replacements by reading the ingredients label and understanding what these ingredients are. Another new artificial sweetener is called Swerve which is a sugar alcohol like xylitol, mannitol, and sorbitol. And it also has oligosaccharides, which are short chain carbohydrates that cannot be broken down by the body and by the human digestive tract, and therefore they go right through it. That's why they're considered calorie free. Swerve also has natural flavoring added to it. Now, although some of these sweeteners are made from partly natural products, the question remains whether they are still good sweetener alter alternatives or is there something better that can be used? In this video, I will examine the benefits and detriments of artificial sweeteners in comparison with natural sweeteners and come to some conclusions and solutions. So the first benefit is that artificial sweeteners have fewer calories or no calories at all. The main appeal of these sugar replacements is their small amount or lack of calories. They are also consumed in much smaller quantities than sugar is because they are many times stronger than natural sugar. This however does cause a problem. When the body receives the sweet taste from these sweeteners but does not get the accompanying calories or energy, then a message is sent to the brain that the energy expected from the sweet food did not arrive. And then this leads the brain to send a message of hunger. And this message arrives about 20 minutes after consumption of the artificial sweetener, which leads to an imbalance in brain, bi in brain biochemistry. This leads to a strong hunger feeling, which then leads us to go in search of high calorie foods to fulfill this missing need that the brain thinks our body should have received. Therefore, these low calorie sweeteners do not really offer the benefit of being low calorie in the long run because the artificial sweetener puts us to consuming more calories in the long run. Also, because of their sweetness, artificial sweeteners stimulate food cravings and sugar dependence that affect any weight loss and habit change attempts. Now let's talk about safety. The previously mentioned sweeteners are approved by the FDA, but science claims that more research is still needed. Research studies showed that these replacement, uh, sugar replacements do not cause cancer in humans, but they do so in rats and mice. But the Center for Science in the Public Interest has assigned the artificial sweeteners, saccharin, aspartame, and acylfame, its lowest rate rating of avoid, meaning you must avoid these foods. As many, cancer of, as many of the cancer researchers state that the past studies had serious design flaws. Also, these sweeteners are linked to obesity and diabetes, which I will talk about right now. The artificial sweeteners do not have carbohydrates, so they are unable to raise blood sugar levels in the same way sugar can. At least this was the general opinion. However, studies have shown that these artificial sweeteners can link to diabetes and obesity, but they cause them in different ways than sugar does. Artificial sweeteners cause some adverse changes in our metabolism by interfering with learned responses that normally contribute to glucose and energy balance in the body. So in the end, research shows that both sugar and artificial sweeteners both lead to obesity and diabetes, only in different ways. Now what about addiction? Studies conducted on rats 
exposed to cocaine have shown that when given a choice between cocaine and saccharin, most mice choose saccharin, the sweetener. <laughs> and this goes to show the very, very addictive nature of these sweeteners. Ongoing exposure to these sweeteners forms taste preferences that lead to their addictive consumption on a regular basis, leading in the long run to excessive food consumption as a result and to weight gain and also obesity. Now, what about taste? Some of the more natural sugar replacements, such as monk fruit and stevia, although sweet, they have a very different taste from sugar. While some people enjoy this often bitter taste, some people do not, especially not the aftertaste that both of these products have. And this leads many manufacturers to add other sweeteners, including sometimes sugar itself, or maltodextrin or dextrose, which change the sweetener's nutritional profile, making it undesirable for health purposes. So to conclude, it is evident that there is no clear consensus on sugar replacements. However, sugar replacements do exhibit many problems that are traditionally associated with sugar, making their status as suitable replacements quite debatable. Now, what's my solution? Well, my personal recommendation as a health expert is to eliminate all forms of sugar replacements unless you can get used to the natural aftertaste of stevia or monk fruit in their natural form. But if you can't, use real sugar alternatives moderately instead. When sweet tasting foods are drastically reduced from the diet, including elimination of the sweet sugar replacements for, for at least three weeks, then the body forms new taste buds, which are replaced on a regular basis with different taste preferences reducing a person's chances of becoming overweight and obese. Now, although this is difficult to do, I totally understand. Start by reducing sweetened beverages that are either sweetened with sugar or sweetened with artificial sweeteners or other sugar replacements. Aim to go for teas that you can sweeten with small amounts of honeycomb or coconut sugar. You can also sweeten porridge and other desserts with cinnamon powder or vanilla flavoring instead of sugar. You may also use the fresh stevia leaves that you can grow on your own windowsill. In the beginning, all of these changes may feel awkward, but they will have a fundamental effect on your health and weight. Even if the only change to your diet that you make this year is to cut out all sweetened foods and beverages, including foods sweetened with sugar substitutes, this one change can have an immense effect on your health and weight. So start slowly. And most importantly, if you do choose to consume foods that are not all natural, then please take the time to read the food labels to know whether there are hidden sugars and sugar substitutes found in the foods. Now, also one more thing I do wanna mention is that although the FDA did permit stevia as a sugar replacement, only the use of highly purified stevia usually with other sugars added to it or other sugar substitutes added to it is permitted in the US, making it a very unnatural sweetener as well. So if you do, uh, uh, if you can get used to the aftertaste of, of the stevia plant or the monk fruit, it is best you can grow the stevia plant on your windowsill and use the leaves whenever needed. Now, another sugar replacement that I didn't mention that can be used to sweeten only cold foods, but not foods that have been cooked, uh, uh, you can't use it for cooking or baking, is the yakon syrup. This is a natural food and it does have calories. It actually has a third of the calories of sugar and can be used to sweeten foods, oh, but only for people who are not sensitive to the class of fibers known as fermentable oligo dye and monosaccharides and polyols. So if you're not sensitive to this, if you are sensitive, you would know. If you're not sensitive, then you can consume this sugar substitute, yakon syrup, but do remember that it does have calories in it. And um, although it, it is also slightly pricey, make sure you're getting 100% pure yakon syrup to prevent the negative effect of the other added sugar replacements often combined with this syrup. So I hope this helps. Thank you very much. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel. I'd appreciate it very much. And also press the bell so you get any announcements when I make a new video, which is about once a week. Um, 
And if you want any more free information on health and nutrition, visit my website at www.thegorilladiet.com. Thank you very much for joining me.